Welcome back to the Mubal Marathon. Today we're going to talk about how to play Scythe cooperatively. Yes, you heard me correctly. Scythe is generally a kind of head-to-head -head multiplayer game where you are attempting to have the most glory or the most gold uh, riches in all of Europa. There is a way to play solo where you are have the same goals, acquiring the most amount of fortune in Europa, but you're just playing against an automated character. This, however, is how to play cooperatively against the desolation faction that we'll talk about here in the center that's surrounding the factory. But you and the other human players that you're playing with would all be working together to defeat this one faction and clear Europa of uh, this desolation, which is the, the name of this module. Now, a few disclaimers before we get moving. This module and the uh, resources required to play it are found within the Rise of Fenris expansion. This is a campaign expansion that provides you, once you have completed the campaign, various modules to change up the game of Scythe. You can include them in games, you can exclude them, you can include as many as you want or as few as you want. This cooperative module um, is presented to you at the end. Now, this will be a spoiler-free video, so I'm not going to show you any of the components that you would have unlocked during the campaign. I'm just going to briefly kind of talk about how... Um, this uh, module works, but I'm not going to spoil anything for you. Also, you could purchase the Rise of Fenris expansion and simply skip the campaign. If all you care about is modules for your game of Scythe and changing up the core game, you can do that. You can simply skip the eight-part campaign and say, just give me the stuff, the new stuff, and that's a perfectly viable option. But uh, again, this will be a spoiler-free video as far as the campaign and those unlocked components are concerned. We're not going to see any of those. All right, first things first. Setup. You'll notice that there is something very obvious here happening in the middle of the board. The Desolation faction, which can be any faction uh, that you're not using. So in this case, I chose... Um, the uh, Connor and Max, the Albion faction here, um, they start the game surrounding the factory and they actually do not move. They just stay put. They don't do anything on their turn. Very super easy to manage until round 12. So their popularity actually starts up at the top of the popularity track. And once it hits round 12, then they will start to move. So the popularity track for them is merely just a timer. So you'll start with their heart up at 18. You'll start with them surrounding the factory. Now the goal of this desolation cooperative module is for you as the human players, either to achieve a specific number of achievements on the triumph track before the timer runs out or wipe out the desolation units. They're never going to have workers on the board. They're only combat units, essentially. They're going to be marching around. If you've defeated all of them, then you can win the game. Um, their goal is to either run the timer out or to um, win six battles, essentially. Every time they win a combat, they get to put a star out and once they that's the only way they put stars out once they have completed that they could win the game so can you get as a group so for example in a three-player game you would have 10 achievements you would need to mark off as a group can you achieve those 10 achievements as a group before the desolation faction can win six combats all right there is uh some unique components that can change up the the triumph track um and there is a unique component that helps determine how the Desolation Faction moves when it is round 12 or less. I'm not going to show you those again to make this spoiler free. Now, setup for you as the human players is concerned is as it normally would be. I have kind of rearranged the board here in a way so that I can show off some things as to what they would look like mid-game. Um, but you would start at your home base, you would start with two workers adjacent to your home base, you would start with your uh, character on home base, your mechs on your faction board, so on and so forth. So what you see here represents more of like a mid-game scenario. Again, probably more than uh, 
higher than round 12 because these guys have not moved. Let's first talk about the Desolation Faction and how it goes around menacing you. After round 12, as I mentioned, there is some unique components that are going to determine which direction these guys move, and they're always going to move all of them in the same direction. So it's going to be a cardinal direction of one of the uh, six sides of each hexagon. So say it is northeast, uh, in this case, they would go, this guy would go here, 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 and this guy would go here. The very next turn, they could go southwest, and they would all end up right back here. Anytime, however, they if they move into a space with a human player's worker and no combat units, that worker escapes back to, oh, sorry, back to their home base. And those resources stay put, and this Com Desolation's combat unit actually carries them around wherever it goes. If it's defeated, then you gain those resources. If a Desolation combat unit enters into a space with a human player's combat unit, uh, could be a mixture, could be uh, multiples, it could look something like this, then a combat will ensue. We're going to talk about how you guys as human players benefit from the cooperative nature of the game here in a little bit. But so that's how Desolation moves. They're going to move each turn in one of the cardinal directions. They're going to kind of move as a swarm. And then as far as combat is concerned, they are going to be acquiring combat cards throughout the game. And these combat cards are going to stay with them. They're going to be face up so that you know what their total is. And that total is going to be their base power. They don't spend power like you do in the normal game. Their power does not reduce at the end of combat, it's always going to be at this point, and then it's going to be modified by a unique die roll. So you never quite know how much combat they're going to bring into a battle or power they're going to bring into a battle, but you know what their base is, and then you can kind of judge what the maximum would be based on the die roll. Um, you can play the odds, but they are going to continue to get more powerful as the game goes on. So just keep that in mind. If a Desolation unit is defeated in combat, it is completely removed from the game. So that's how you, as a the human players, can earn victory, is removing all of the Desolation units. But again, if it's just one or two Desolation units standing, they are going to be far more powerful than when there was uh, four or five on the board. So, but that's it. Uh, that's all it is as far as controlling the AI or the enemy in the game. Again, each time they win a combat, they're going to place out one of their stars. And if their sixth star is placed, the Desolation, Desolation Faction wins the game. Or if their timer runs out, essentially 18 rounds on the popularity track, they win the game. All right, enough about the bad guys. Let's talk about you guys and how you can cooperate in a game of Scythe. So, first things first, you'll notice that you can share spaces. So, obviously, you are not going to initiate a combat if you move into a space with uh, somebody else's combat units, workers, anything like that. So, multiple mechs from different factions can share a space. Uh, workers uh, like that can share a space, can be in a faction. What you cannot do is you cannot move workers from another faction on your turn. Your mech cannot pick up and transport workers. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it about the things you cannot do. Um, when it is your turn and you take the produce action. So if the uh, purple player here takes the produce action on this space, they will just produce for the workers that they have there. They don't produce for all the, the three workers there. If this guy produces them on his turn, he would produce an additional one. And those can all stay put. Anybody now can take these resources and move around with them. I mean, technically that worker is moving onto a lake. But even though he produced this one, that, that one uh, steel doesn't have to stay with that one person. So you guys share your resources. That's one of the biggest components. Then later on in the game, say the white person wants to bring out another one of their mechs onto the board and they need to pay for it. They could come over here and use this steel 
that's technically being protected by purple and red to pay for their mech. So resources are shared. You cannot combine units when producing, but resources can be carried away by any one of the factions. They can be used from anywhere on the map by any one of the factions. So that's the number one way you guys are cooperating. Now, buildings. You can only build your buildings uh, on your turn, and there can only be one building per square. So if the white faction wanted to build um, that building there, they would have to, you know, move and build it somewhere else. They could come back over here and build it. So there can only be one building per square, but the mine entrance can be used by any faction. So if I was here on this mine space and I could travel to any one of these, normally only the white player could use this space to teleport around the map. I can, however, take my mech from this mine space and pop up over here. So could the red player, um, you know, that red worker or something like that. So you can share your mine buildings. You don't share any of the other buildings. So if you have a mill out that produces resources, that only produces on your turn when you take the produce action. Let's also talk about combat, because obviously we're going to need it to defeat these ever-growing in power uh, desolation mechs. If you guys are teamed up on a square and uh, the desolation, it would have to be that the desolation was moving into your space because you can't uh, bring another mech with you. You could bring another worker with you, but you cannot bring another mech with you into combat. But if they move into your space and say in this instance, they moved into here, one of these players, one of these factions would need to determine that they're going to spend the power. So they would claim, you know, the power dial. They are actually going to spend the power. So if they spend the maximum of seven, they have to have seven on the power track. I know that's down here off camera. They would have to have seven in order to spend, but they can put in a combat card for their one mech. If they had multiple mechs, uh, they could put in two. And the other faction can also put in a power card um, because they have a mech there. So this is how you're going to have the ability to get upwards of, you know, could be 20, uh, even 20 power could be what it takes to defeat a desolation uh, combat unit. So you share in defense combat. Uh, again, if you go on the offense, then you're you're just going to kind of be by yourself unless you have moved two of your mechs in there and can play two combat cards. But And that's it. At the end of the day, you are taking your turns exactly like you normally would. You have to still move and choose a different action each turn. You still have to respect the rivers and lakes until your faction mat changes those rules. The two biggest things are defending together against the desolation units and sharing resources all across the map to help you achieve the set out predetermined specific achievements that you have to put one star on, doesn't matter if one person places six and the other one places four and only one person places zero. It doesn't matter. As long as there are, in a three-player game, for example, 10 stars out, one on each of the various uh, triumphs that are randomized at the beginning of the game due to this module. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Uh, some of you might be wondering, well, why would I want to play Scythe cooperatively? Well, there's some people out there who have played so much competitive Scythe, maybe they want to change a pace. This also is a great way to introduce uh, younger or less hardcore gamers to the world of Scythe. Um, younger gamers who don't quite understand the strategy of building up that engine and resource um, management and things like that. You can know that 
A, you've got, what is it, six turns to kind of do your thing before anybody really starts messing with you. And then on top of that, you can help them. So if you have created a really nice engine or, you know, really nice setup for a certain resource, you can loan those resources to the other players. So in my opinion, this is a great way to bring in either younger or less experienced scythe players into the fold. Again, this comes in, the, the equipment necessary to play this module comes in the Rise of Fenris expansion. Personally, I would play through the campaign. It is one of the best gaming experiences you can have, uh, especially for a Euro style game uh, like this and not like a Ameritrash game, a dice chucker, dungeon crawl or something like that. It's a really nice story. It brings a lot of new fun elements to the world of Scythe. So if you love Scythe and are looking to mix things up a little bit, go pick up that expansion. Um, but this one, I just wanted to point this out because this really doesn't get talked about a lot. The fact that you can play Scythe cooperatively. So you can play it competitively. You can play it solo and you can play it cooperatively. That runs the full gamut of options for a uh, Euro as, as far as I'm concerned. And you can play it as a campaign. So there you go. One shot, campaign, competitive, solo, cooperatively. Any way you want it, you can have it with Scythe. So again, questions, comments, leave them in the uh, section below. Please keep comments spoiler free because again, I worked really hard to explain this without spoiling anything for anybody who has not played through the Rise of Fenris campaign and still wants to. Um, but love to hear your thoughts, whether you play cooperatively at any point in time, uh, whether you enjoy this module or whether you think it's uh, worthless. That's fair too. Other than that, thank you for watching. Have a great day.